Howdy folks, Dave Tyner with NVIDIA here. And uh, today I'm gonna be responding to uh, some questions on our Discord server in the Contest Machinima channel. Uh, how to add a floating sparks from a campfire flame, how to add smoke to a flame and have the smoke collide with another object. And um, seen is at night, so he wants things to glow. And that is Twin Snakes 007. So uh, here's what I put together for that. So we have a flow simulation. It's colliding with a sphere here. You can see in here, if I turn on my uh, rectangle light, you can see there's smoke emitting from the flame. And uh, I believe this is what, uh, what he's trying to accomplish. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we do that. All right, so uh, back here in Machinima, I've opened up a new stage. I've just added some basic elements, uh, a plane, a, a box I created in 3ds Max, which I'll be happy to share with you, a sphere, and then uh, I've, I've applied a glass material to it. So now I want to come in, and I'm just going to create an X form, and I will double click it and call it uh, Flow Sphere. And then under Window and Browsers, you want to browsers you want to click flow presets here and that's too big so we'll drag it on down here and uh, with my x form selected i'm just going to double click fire so you can see all right so i got a little fire going there i'm going to select my sphere now right click on it and say add physics collider and then in the properties scroll down and change that to uh, convex decomposition And then in the uh, advection under uh, under flow simulate, we have advection here. Uh, no, flow simulate. Yes, physics collision enabled. That one. Okay, let's run it again. Okay, so now you can see we're colliding with the sphere, which is what we want. But we want to pump up the fire a little bit and maybe um, give it some smoke too, which is I believe what he was asking for. So let's do that. So first thing, again, under Advection, I'm going to change the Z gravity value to minus 300. Okay. And maybe offset this a little bit so we can see it better. Uh, and then I'm going to modify the fuel per burn here to be minus, or sorry, uh, you got to lower it to increase it, which is counterintuitive, but uh, that's the way it works. So maybe 0.15, and that'll give us a little more. Maybe I'll just go 0.1. Cool. Now we have some good uh, action going on that. Uh, let's go ahead and make our flow emitter sphere radius of like 20. And that'll be pumping out a lot more fire, so that's good. And we do have a little bit of smoke here, but let's go ahead and, uh, and give us some more smoke. And the way we're going to do that is under advection again smoke per burn let's dial that up to like 10. we got some nice big thick black smoke coming off of that you can see we're running out of blocks though so we'll have to i mean if this is just the shot right here that's fine if not um, you're going to want to up your block count and you're going to find that under render settings common and then if you come down here under flow let's just select a couple things here first we do want uh real-time shadows and we want uh path tray shadows and then we're going to up our block count i believe default is 4000 and so um, if we up that to 12000 it's going to reduce frame rate a bit but uh, it's also going to make sure that our uh, our smoke doesn't end there and then uh, you can also, if you like the smoke, you can come in to Advection again and Properties and uh, set your cooling rate to something like four. And that should give you some frames. It just means it's going to die. The smoke will die sooner. And so you'll still get uh, a lot of smoke, but it'll, it'll just die. So you'll, you'll get some frames back there for sure. Okay. So now we're going to stop that. Actually, we can keep playing it. And if I come down here to render settings and go to ray tracing and under indirect uh, diffuse lighting, I'm going to set my ambient intensity to be zero. So I don't want any other light uh, 
a ambient light upsetting my scene. And then I'm going to set the um, indirect diffuse GI if I want the flames to glow. And there you have it, they're glowing. So I'll stop that, play it again. And you can see we have all the things that we're looking for there. I can toggle on this, uh, there's actually a light in here. So I can turn that on. Okay, I'll pause it there. I'm gonna switch to path trace mode now. Well, I'll stop it. Okay, so if I hit play, you can see nothing's happening. And uh, the way to fix that is under path tracing and then go under path tracing again. And you just wanna click this reset accumulation on time change. And that way uh, you'll get your fire back. And you can see path trace actually does cast light directly. So we'll stop that, play it again. And so in terms of performance, um, because we added so many blocks and because we have so much smoke, it's really uh, taking a toll on our frame rate here. So I'm going to come over here to flow simulate and the density cell size, uh, I'm going to up that to one and let's look at uh, the performance increase. Okay, so you can see the flames are less detailed, but uh, in terms of frame rate, I'm getting quite a bit here. And so I might want to also go in under advection here and smoke per burn, maybe dial that down to something like five. Let's turn on our light so we can measure that. But you're definitely going to want to tune flow to meet, uh, you know, the requirements here. And, you know, the lower that you set that density cell size, the more detailed the flames become, but also um, you take a big performance hit on that. So if you want to determine where all those blocks are going, maybe you have, you know, a fire going and it's just being wasted because there's a huge amount of processing power being consumed, you know, outside of your uh, camera view here, you can come down here to flow render, ray march, and then um, enable block wireframe. So now if I press it, you can see what's happening with flow here. So I'm going to create a camera from view, and then I'm going to snap back to perspective mode. So that's about right. Um, I can see my flow cuts off just outside of my room here, which is uh, what we're looking for. And so let me just go ahead and turn that off. But that's a really, uh, really handy feature for uh, debugging your flow. And then of course we can just do one of these and watch it interact. Okay, so I hope this is really helpful and uh, feel free to ping uh, us with more questions. Until then, we'll talk to you soon.